Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Now if you're taking your car for service or repair, this video is for you. Now the reason I'm making this video is today I had to take my car to a dealer for some warranty repairs and boy was I pissed. And what I want to do is I want to give you a list of five things you can do when you're getting ready to take your car for service, warranty, repair, or whatever, just to help you out so you don't get ripped off. Now let me start by saying this. Not all mechanics, not all dealerships, and not all shops are out there to rip you off. Most of the guys are really great. They're honest, they're trying to make a living, they're going to help you out, and they're going to do a great job. I have a mechanic that I use for my vehicles. Matter of fact, I don't even drop my car off. I, I, I give him the keys, he drives the car to work, fixes it, and brings it back, so I trust him completely. So there are people out there you can trust. But in the case you can't, these are the tips I want you to follow so that you don't get ripped off in the process. Now here's the back story. I have a 2018 Chevy Malibu and, that I bought brand new. And recently, it's not even just about over a year old, recently there, on the back of the car there's a third tail light, a third brake light that goes across the top. I looked at it, mine was cracked. Now I only have 25,000 miles on it, a little over a year and a half old, should be covered under warranty, right? So, first thing, if you're going to take your car in, the first thing you should do is do an online search to look for the problem. In my particular case, I looked up 2018 Chevy Malibu third brake light cracked and I got some results so I found out that there is a design flaw that causes these brake lights to crack so I called up made an appointment and I went to get my car looked at to get the part knowing already that this is a problem with this car I had some information before I went to the dealer now I go to the dealer and the service writer comes out and he looks at it and goes huh that's a new one and I'm thinking hmm that's suspicious already. I don't trust them because it's a known problem. It's written in all the forms and everybody knows about it. So why is this guy the one guy in the world that, of Chevrolet that doesn't know that this is a problem? So by doing that online search first and looking for the problem, I already knew it was a problem. I already knew I couldn't trust them. So then we walk out and take a look at my car and I show them the crack. There's no witness marks where it got hit. There's no scratches. Absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, it was cracked on the uh, passenger side and since it lifted up it was already starting to crack on the driver's side as well. So after we look at it we go back in and we sit at his desk and he says let me look up the part. So he looks up the part number and he goes hey we have those in stock and immediately I thought hmm let me get this straight. This is a chronic problem you don't know anything about it. The car is just over a year old and you already have parts in stock that are so unique that I would expect you'd have to order it and it would take a few days to get. So you have parts in stock and it's a chronic problem I found online. So those are two red flags right there. I had some information. So that's the second tip. First tip, do some online research. Make sure you know what you're talking about, have some information. The second tip, put eyes on the problem with the mechanic with you. Stand next to him and say, this is the problem right here. So there's no confusion about what you're there for, what you want fixed, and you both agree what needs to be worked on. Now I'm not saying if something else is wrong they shouldn't fix that as well, but you should at least know the primary problem you're there for. And by both you looking at it, putting some eyes on it, and discussing it, you're sure you're not going to get ripped off on something else. Now the third tip. When you drop the car off, and they're going to do the work, ask them to save the parts for you. If you're going to wait for the car, what's the big deal? I sat there, check this out, two and a half hours for a third brake light to be replaced. And I asked them, say, could you please save that part? I'd like to take a look at it because I'd, I'd like to know why it cracked. So I asked them to save the parts. Now, if they're not willing to save the parts, it's because they may say they changed something that they didn't actually change and charge you for a part that you didn't get. So by asking them to save the parts, you're saying, hey, I want you to prove that you actually did this repair. And it was a good thing I did that because after the repair was done and my car was sitting out ready to be picked up, I went and looked at it and I was looking at the, uh, the brake light they put on there like, you know, that doesn't look right. So I walked back in, got the service ready, goes, what's the matter? I said, come over here and take a walk with me. We went and took a look at the brake light they put on on top of the third brake light. They put that on and I said, that doesn't look right. Is that the one you took off? He said, yeah. I said, please go get the other part for me. Go to the mechanic and get the part you took off. So wouldn't you know it, he comes back from the mechanic. He's walking out. He's got no part in his hand. And I'm thinking, where's the part? He looks at me. He goes, yeah, you're right. It was the wrong part. 
So now we got the online search, right? Both of you look, put eyes on the part that needs to be fixed or whatever needs to be fixed, and ask them to save any parts they change. Those are the first three. The fourth one, verify the work to, that was performed. You want to verify it was done. Now, if you drop your car off and you go to pick it up, uh, in my case, I, was, I sat and waited for it, and they always, the mechanic takes it and he likes to park it like two dealers down and you're going to walk 500 yards to get it. Then they give you your key and say, hey, go to the cashier and take care of your car, sign some paperwork, and you're all done. Well, before I did that, this is the last tip. Before you sign anything, I got one more tip, but before you sign anything, go and verify the work that was done. So I said, you know what, I'll be right back. I walk out and go and look at my car. Now the, the, right, the, the correct light was put on, but don't just, I went and looked inside where the screws were, and guess what? I called the uh, service manager again. I drove my car back in. He goes, what's the matter now? I said, come on with me, let's take a walk. He, we walk out, we get in the back of my car, and we see this. Now my car has a gray interior. Those black plugs should be gray. That means the mechanic who changed the light didn't have the right parts. So he grabbed anything he had, in this case he had black ones, and put them in there. Those are supposed to be gray to match the interior. So I said, what's with the black plugs? He said, let me be right back. So he goes and talks to the mechanic again. He goes, yeah, he didn't have the right parts, so we're gonna have to order them for you. So here's the tip. You always want to check out the work before you initial, sign, do anything because as soon as you sign at the cashier that you accept the work, you've just accepted it. And if you find something wrong when you get home, you own it. You're not going to get your money back. Before you pay, before you sign, before you do anything, go out and take a look at it, take the car for a ride, verify the work is done to your satisfaction, and when you're happy, then go into the cashier, then pull out your credit card or cash, and then pay for the work that was done to your satisfaction. So there I was, a job that should have taken 30, 45 minutes at best. I was there for two and a half hours for all these parts, searching around. And I saw the, this was a warranty repair, so not only did I sit there for two and a half hours, they, the dealership is going to charge the company two hours of labor for warranty repair, for which it did not take two hours. That's why your cars are so expensive, these little tricks they play. So you have to make sure that they're doing the repair, you see the parts, and you verify that the work they say they did was done properly, and it was to your satisfaction. So now the last tip is to document everything. When you make your appointment, know who you made the appointment with, put a name. Just go to a store, buy a little notepad, keep it in your glove box, your center console, whatever. It's worth a million dollars, that little notebook, because what you're going to do is you're going to write down the date, the time, who you talked to on the phone, who you made the appointment with, what you're going there to get fixed. Then when you get there, make the, uh, write down the name of the service person who took your keys, the mechanic you talked to, whoever took your car in, and then document what you took it there for, how it was done, if you were satisfied, if they saved the parts, didn't save the parts, you looked at it, you verified the work was done correctly, you took it for a drive, you verified everything was done fine, and then you paid and how much it was. Take those notes in great detail because if there are any problems down the road, you have documented the problem, and if anything goes to court, a case or anything like that, you have a record of what you saw, what you did, what you paid for, and what you were told. And that's worth a lot of money right there. So now here I am. I have my third brake light replaced. But now i got to go back again for them to change two little plastic plugs. Now, if I didn't say anything, if I didn't check the repair, and if I didn't look at it, I would have driven home, never really noticed it. When you look in the rear view mirror, you really don't notice those plugs back there. One day I would be back there, I would look at them and say, hey, What's with the black plugs? By then it could be two, three, four, six, eight months later. I'm going to go back there and say, hey, you guys put the wrong plugs in? No. Verify it before you leave. Now, I know this is a short video, but I want you to learn from my experience, and I really hate when it happens. Now, like I said, there are a lot of great people out there, a lot of great technicians, but I've had five brand new cars, all from different manufacturers. I've had five distinct problems with each one of them, all from different dealers, took them back, and I've had five bad experiences. Maybe I'm just bad luck. I don't know. So let's go over the list one more time. Before you go, do an online search for the problem. See if it really is a chronic problem so you know more about it. You have some information before you take your car in. Second, drop it off. Put eyes on the problem with the person who's going to be doing the repair, the technical service writer, the person you deal with. Stand next to your car and point to it so you both know. 
ask them to save any parts. If they're going to change anything, tell them you want to save the part so you can compare the part they took off to the part they put on to make sure it's done right, okay? Uh, fourth, verify the repair. Go out, look at it, make sure it's right, look at the color, make sure the color matches, take it for a test drive, start it up, drive around, make sure it works, and finally make sure you document everything. It's really important. So the more you know, the more informed you are, the less chance you have of getting ripped off. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.